Jargon is the enemy of clear and effective communication. Alan Siegel. This quote, I really like this quote as personally I do believe that jargon is not necessary. For anyone that doesn't know what jargon means, it's the words and phrases used in a specific industry or when talking about a particular topic. This can be professional or non-professional. So for example, any golf terminology would be considered jargon for that sport. Any words related to marketing would be considered marketing jargon. Jargon is something you come across often in the workplace. When I was a marketing manager, I tried to avoid jargon as much as possible because I don't think it's helpful for clear communication. It can also exclude new members. So if you have new team members or new people that have joined your company and you're using all of this jargon and acronyms that they are not used to, you're making it more difficult for them to learn the company, learn what is happening. However, I am making this video because you will come across it often. And so here are 10 common acronyms used in the workplace and what they actually mean. The first one you may have come across, C-suite, C-suite. So this refers to the highest level of executives in a company. They usually have C before the rest of their title. So for example, CEO, Chief Executive Officer, the person who runs the business, the CEO, he is in the C-suite or she is in the C-suite. The CFO, Chief Financial Officer, so the person in charge of all the finances. CMO, Chief Marketing Officer, and this goes on and on. You have many CEOs. They are all within the C-suite. So C-suite, Chief of the company, Chiefs of the company. HR, again, I think a very easy one. I think many people know what HR is, but just in case, Human Resources. And HR refers to any aspect of the employee's welfare within the company. That includes being paid as well. Many companies will have different HR roles. Maybe their HR does more, does less. Maybe they have one person, maybe they have 50 people. But any HR is the welfare of the employees. FAQ and Q&A. I have included both of these together. Q&A, I think, is an easy one. Question and answers. So FAQs, what does that mean? Well, it's frequently asked questions. So if you've ever worked in customer service before, you will know customers like to ask the same questions again and again. How much does something cost? How long will it take to get there? How efficient is something? Every company will have its own FAQs because their customers will ask different questions, of course. So the FAQ refers to frequently asked questions. And the reason companies will put these on their website is so their customers can easily find the information without having to ask again. So it saves the company time and it saves the customer time. Okay, moving into some of the more difficult acronyms, CPC and PPC. I've put these two together because they are very similar. CPC is cost per click and PPC is pay per click. So this is a marketing term. The pay per click refers to how much a company or organization pays per click on the advertisement that they are running, how much they pay. Whereas the CPC, the cost per click, is a metric or a measurement used to figure out how much an ad costs. So that includes everything. That includes the customer going through to the website. That includes the VAT, the VAT. That includes the cost of running the ad. That includes any other costs related to that ad. 
So it's not the amount of money they pay, it is worked out over a scale. And this is a measurement, a metric to figure out how much each click on the advert costs the business, costs the organization. So just to put it into another perspective for you, the pay per click is how much the business pays someone else for their ad. Whereas the cost per click is how much the business pays overall when their ad is clicked on. So I just mentioned this in the previous one, VAT or VAT as it's sometimes referred to. This stands for value added tax. Now the VAT, the reason I've included this, obviously we use it in most countries, so maybe you're very familiar with it. But the reason I've included it is because depending where you go, the VAT can be added into the cost of the product or not. So for example, if you go into a supermarket in the UK, all of the tax, the VAT, the value added tax is in that price that you see. If a chocolate bar costs two pound, that is the cost. However, in America, if a chocolate bar costs $2, that does not include the VAT. So when you go to the till, when you go to pay, it may cost you $2.20 because they do not include the VAT in the price seen in the shop. Whereas in the UK, we do. It's part of our rules and regulations. We have to include the VAT in the price that the customer sees. UI. Now, UI is relatively new. Of course, the idea is not new, but this term is relatively new. It stands for user interface. And what this refers to is the design of the website or the app or the software that the customer is using. So interface. And user is the customer or the person purchasing or the business, if it's a B2B business, what they are looking at, what they go through to contact you, to purchase from you. That's the user interface. A lot of people work in UI design nowadays, and that is website design, software design, app design. So anything relating to the technology that the customer uses to contact the business. Now UX is similar. UX stands for user experience. So let me know in the comments what you think user experience means, because of course it can differ depending on your business, your product, your company. But user experience is another way of saying customer journey. So what does the customer experience? What does the user experience when they are on your website, when they are on your application? Is it easy for them to navigate? Is it easy for them to figure out where to pay? Is it really difficult to find the checkout button? The user experience. The same as customer service, but customer service is person to person. User experience is person to technology that they are using. SEM stands for Search Engine Marketing. Now, I talked about SEO in my other acronyms video, which you can watch up here. SEO is a part of SEM, Search Engine Marketing. So Search Engine is the platform you use to search for something. So when you break your toe and you Google, how do I fix my broken toe? You are searching, you are using a search engine. So search engine marketing is the marketing to get your platform, your business, your product higher in the search rankings, search positions. So if I Google dog friendly hotels in my area, which one comes up first? And someone who works in search engine marketing is someone who knows about SEO, knows about analytics, Google Analytics, for example, and knows how to make the most of their keywords so that when I search for my dog-friendly hotel, they come up first. 
their business comes up first. And final one today, MGMT. Now, I personally don't know why you would ever use this because it takes just as long to say MGMT as it does management. One is not faster than the other. And even typing MGMT is about the same speed as typing management. However, MGMT refers to management. So you may see, can all MGMT come to the staff room at 10 a.m.? It just means can all management members come to the staff room for some important meeting or briefing? MGMT. Are there any acronyms you have come across in your work life and you're unsure what they mean? Or are there any acronyms you want to introduce to other English learners that you were confused with in the beginning, but actually the meaning is very simple? And again, like I said, let me know if you've ever come across an acronym that I haven't covered and you think, I didn't know what that was in the beginning. Your comment might help another English learner. So have a fantastic week and I will see you next time. Bye bye.